welcome to today lesson dear students i hope to continue the glass menagerie scene 1 and 2 i discussed in previous videos here i am dealing with uh, scene 3 tennessee williams the glass menagerie scene 3 opens like this legend on screen after the fiasco tom speaks from the fire escape landing tom says after the fiasco at the rubicons business college the idea of getting a gentleman caller from laura began to play a more and more important part in mother's calculations fiasco means a failure fiasco now you know that laura couldn't continue her studies at the rubicon business school and she failed it's out that mother Uh, wants to arrange a marriage for her right getting a gentleman caller for laura began to play more and more important part in mother's calculation <coughs> you know that uh, amanda being a dedicated mother wants to establish laura's future with the marriage as she is helpless it became an obsession like some archetype of the universal consciousness the image of the gentleman called a haunted our small apartment here the writer speaks of significance for marriage hmm? significance for marriage for a young girl in that working class society in america image young man at door with flowers and evening at home rarely passed without some allusions to this image this factor this hope it is the continuous hope of amanda even when he wasn't mentioned his presence hung in mother's preoccupied look and in my sister's frightened apologetic manner hung like a sentence passed upon the wind field she is apologetic laura because she is shy she doesn't know how to maintain a marriage life she is isolated marriage is a, is something frightening for her that she never hopes mother was a woman of action as well as words tom appreciates his mother as a woman of action as well as words correct the reason she brought up two children without husband there is no word mentioned about what she did but we come to know that she dedicated whole life she has done something job was something to earn money late that winter and in the early spring realizing that extra money would be needed properly feather the nest and plume the bird she conducted a vigorous campaign on the telephone dropping in subscription to one of those magazines for matrons called the homemakers companion the type of journal that feature the serialized sublimations of ideas of letters to think in terms of delicate cup like breast slim tapering waist rich creamy thighs eyes like wood the smoke in autumn fingers that soothe then cares like strains of music body says powerful that it has can sculpture we have to understand like this they are poor amanda tries to find some money and to renovate house and give a dress to daughter it was also something difficult for them as they are poor as now you know what tom's brings home is just sufficient for their survival no other things they have no happiness right entire their life is caged to this place cocoon life is clean image glamour magazine covers amanda enters with phone on lawn extension cord she is spotted in the dim mistake amanda ida is caught she is calling her dr meeting members this is amanda wingfield me missed you at the dr last monday i said to myself she is probably suffering with that sinus condition how is that sinus condition 
that is illness and regarding bones. Horus, heaven have mercy, you are a Christian martyr, yes, that's what you are, Christian martyr, yes. Well, I just now happen to notice that your subscription to the companions about expire. Yes, it expires with the next issue, honey. Just join that wonderful new serial by Bessie May Hopper. Bessie May Hopper. That's about a certain war event. Getting now to such uh, exciting start, oh honey, is something that you can't miss. You remember how gone with the wind took everybody by storm. You simply couldn't go out if you hadn't read it. All everybody liked was Scarlet Tohara. Well, this is a book that critics already compare to Gone with the Wind. It's the Gone with the Wind of the post World War generation. What? Burning or honey. Don't let them burn. Go take a took in the oven and I'll hold the wire. Heavens, I think she's hung up, dim out, she's calling, and she's talking about the world. After that, Tom, what is Christ's name, am I? Amanda, don't you use that Tom supposed to do? Amanda, expression, not in my Tom or Amanda, present, have you gone out your senses? Tom, I have, that's driven out. Now, actually, being a young man, uh, Tom is treated in the wrong way. Mother doesn't think about that. He should have his own freedom. But he's always with the mother's insistence and influence. I mean, what's the matter with you? You big, big idiot. Now, actually, he should receive appreciation, admiration for his dedication to the family. Being a young man, he doesn't think of his own life. Right? But the mother speaks to him as idiot, idiot. Thus, she speaks to one who keep them alive. Tom, are you got nothing, no single thing? Ah, yes. That's why I say, I got no single thing. I'm under lower your voice. Tom, in my life here, I can call my own. That means he has no any freedom. There is nothing called his own. Everything is mother's. Amanda, stop shouting, Tom. Yesterday you confiscated my books. Uh, mother has taken his book, confiscated, taken to her custody. Confiscate, I think, single word, Raj Santakarno. Mother has taken a book he was reading. That's a book uh, about sex stories. Amanda, I took that horrible novel back to the library, yes. That hideous book by that insane Mr. Lawrence? Tom laughs widely. D.H. Lawrence writes books about that sexual subjects. Tom has been reading one and mother confiscated it. We have to think that Tom is a young boy and mother has done something unnecessary. To interfere his life, she has no right. Because he is not a teenager, he is a working man as well as one who supports the family. I cannot control the output of disease minds of people who cater to them. Now, according to Amanda, uh, disease mind people are only reading this type of books. Therefore, she doesn't like it. So, we understand that Amanda's behavior, her concept, her emotions, mm -hmm. attitudes are different from the rest of the American ladies. America is not a country that keeps barriers for such books. But I won't allow such filth brought into my house. No, no, no. My house. Now, actually she says it's her house. It's not her house. Rent is paid by Tom. Tom, house, house, who pays rent on it? Who makes a slave of him? To her? He expresses his angry voice. Actually he has a right. He should have a right, but he has no right. We should appreciate Tom also for tolerating everything at, at the end of... Now, we come to know that he leaves uh, mother and sister. Until his departure, he dedicates his life to them. Unlike his father. Father fled from that uh, unenthusiastic environment uh, at the beginning. So, now he is giving shoulders to father's errors. Right? 
he has taken burden onto his shoulder. Don't dare to. Tom, no, no, I mustn't say anything. Things. Are you got to? Just, Amanda, let me tell you. Tom, I don't want to hear any more. He tears the portiers open. The upstage area lit with tragic smoke and glow. Amanda's eyes in the mental curls. And like that, after that, Amanda says, you will hear more, you? Tom, no, I won't hear more. I'm going out. Amanda, you come right back in. Tom, out, out, bigger sign. Come back here, Tom Wingfield. I'm not through talking to you. Oh, go, Laura. Tom, Amanda, you are going to listen. And no more insolence from you. I'm at the end of my patient. Now, mother says she's at the end of her patient. Such words should not be uh, told by herself. Because one who right is at the end of his patience is Tom, right, not uh, mother. Tom, what do you think I'm at? Aren't I supposed to have any patience to reach the end of her? He asked. Huh? Oh, mother, I know, I know, it seems unimportant to you. What I'm doing, what I'm doing. That's also, he also feels sad because his service is not appreciated. Mother, instead of that, uh, reigns the home. Hmm? She becomes the upper hand. What I want to do, having little difference between them, you don't think that. Amanda, I think you have been doing things that you are ashamed of. Huh? That's why you act like this. Again, we understand that she is wrong. But uh, there is one thing, Amanda fears that uh, Tom will go on the wrong way and then they will be helpless because Tom is the only source of protection for them. I don't believe that you go every night to the movies because at night he goes out and comes early morning. I don't believe that you go to uh, that you go every night to movies. Nobody goes to the movies night after night. Nobody in their right minds goes to the movies as often as you pretend. People don't go to movies at nearly midnight. And movies don't let out at 2 a.m. Because he comes home every day 2 a.m. Come stumbling, muttering to yourself like a maniac. You get three hours sleep and then go to work. Oh, I can picture the way you are doing down there. Morphing, doping because you are in no condition. On the side of the Tom behavior, on the side of Tom, what we understand is that he is also depressed and disappointed. He has no solace for his life. Yes. No, I am in no condition. Yes, he admits. Because uh, sarcastically he says this. Because if he is in go uh, good condition, he will not uh, remain in this house looking after mother and sister, because it's not his right. He's not obliged to do that, though he does. Amanda asks, what right have you got to jeopardize your job? Ah, jeopardize means put into danger. Jeopardize the security of us soul now here. Actually, that's what she fears. Security of us soul means them both, mother and sister. How do you think we had managed if you were? Uh, that is the fear she has. She expresses it. Tom, listen, you think I'm crazy about the warehouse. You think I'm in love with continental shoemakers. You think I want to spend 55 years there down in that politics interior with fluorescent tubes. Uh, he talks about his... Uh, warehouse. He doesn't like to work there. Actually, he rise, He has a right to rise up to another place. He wishes that. Absence of job satisfaction can be seen here. He is not satisfied on his job. I would rather somebody picked up a crowbar and battered out my brains than go back mornings. 
I go. Every time you come in yelling that, God damn, rise and shine, rise and shine. That means in the morning, mother, every day, awakens him like that. I say to myself, how lucky dead people are. But I get up, I go for $65 a month. I give up all that dream of doing and being never up. He has also dreams to reach a best place in his position. But instead of doing that, he is uh, in prison in this place because of mother and sister. Listen, if self is what I thought of, mother, I would be where he is gone. Uh, he is gone mean, he is gone mean he saw the picture of father and he gives a hint that I also, I will also go where he went. As far as the system of transposition reaches, don't grab at me, mother. Amanda, where are I going? I am going to the movies. Amanda, I don't believe like Tom, I am going to opium dens. Now he tells a false story, fabricated story to scare his mother. He tells like this, I am going to opium dens. That means underworld gang. Yes, opium dens. Then so wise and criminals. Hang out, mother. Are you joined the Hong Kong gang? That place. There are many underworld gangs. I have joined one. I am a hired assassin. I carry a Tommy gun in a violin case. In a violin case, he is carrying a Tommy gun. Now, though it is a uh, uh, lie. There is something important for us to understand about the social background, violence. That means such gangs are functioning in America. I carry a Tommy gun in a violin case. I run a string of cat houses in the valley. They call me Killer, Killer Wingfield. That is also false. I am leading a double life. A simple, honest warehouse worker by day, by night a dynamic Tsar. Tsar in Russia, like that. Of the underworld, mother, I go to gambling casinos. I go to gambling casinos. That means night time they are also functioning there. I spin away fortunes on the roulette table. I wear a patch over one eye and a false Moustache. Sometimes I put on green whiskers. Now he creates a picture of a terrible man, a hired assassin, an underworld hooligan, as we see in movies. Oh, I could tell you, on those occasions they call me El Diablo. Oh, I could tell you things to make you sleepless. My enemies plan to dynamite this place. They are going to blow us all sky high some night. I will be glad, very happy, and so will you. You will go up, up on a broomstick or blue mountain with seventeen gentlemen callers. You ugly, babbling old witch. He blames his mother. That uh, she, she always re recollects about uh, seventeen gentlemen callers, you know. Then he says, uh, after dynamiting this house, you can blow up in the sky and then go on the broomstick. That butterfly going on broomstick like that. There's a children's story. After that, hmm? Amanda says, I won't speak to you until you apologize. Right? And after that, Tom disappears. Now here, uh, one, this scene speaks of the family background. Their behavior, their hopelessness. Being a mother, she fears that they will lose Tom. Right? That's why she wants Tom to behave like a child. She is a young man, but mother doesn't understand that he is a young man. He is not appreciated for his service. Instead of that, she works to make his life tedious. Right? Being a mother, she is wrong that way. But... Uh, we can't uh, lay blames on her for that because she, she fears that she and her daughter will be 
helpless uh, if uh, Tom goes on the wrong way. Right? When you write answers, these things will be important. Right? Let's proceed with in another video. Right? Have a nice day. And thank you for listening.